So in this video I want to talk about naming codes because I feel that not enough attention is given to this particular element of data analysis either in methodological books or university instruction as a whole. And uh, when I think back to the times when I was a student I remember I wasted way too much time worrying about codes, how to name them specifically, worrying about their names, are they correct, are they not correct, even going back to the books to try to understand what's the, what's the formula, what's, the, what's the, uh, the rule for naming these codes. And I know that lots of you struggle with the same, with the very same thing. So when we talk uh, during uh, our private tutorials, I know that very often uh, many of you are anxious about your codes. It, this blocks your progress, in fact. And and students tell me that they, they are anxious about their names, the, the names of their codes, and and they basically they are petrified and they cannot really focus on on the most important task, which is the actual analysis and developing these codes and then developing themes. So in this video, I'll I'll talk about some general rules for how to name uh, the codes, for what to do, for what not to do. Uh, I'll give uh, two specific pieces of advice and I'll show you a bunch of real codes from my data to further make, make uh, my arguments. So I think uh, the very first thing uh, that's important is to, uh, before talking about how to name the codes, is for me to remind you what the purpose of coding is in the first place. I do have another video about coding and what it is and what it is not, but here just to summarize the main point, I suppose, uh, Coding is your uh, way of making sense of your data. So as a researcher, you're coding. You, uh, these codes are your tools. I like to think of them as, as such, your tools for making sense of, of your data. So that's, um, that's the purpose of coding, because later these codes, as I also like to say, uh, will form a, w a kind of a table of contents. So a table of contents of your data, because you'll have a list of codes which will show you what your data is about. And based on that list of codes, you will develop uh, understanding of your data that, that is good enough to develop themes. So themes that represent what really was covered in your data. So that's in a nutshell, I would say, the, the purpose of coding. So think about it uh, for a second now. So if the purpose of coding is to make sense of your data, to really understand your data, it is crucial that you understand your codes, right? So that's that's a, a, a thing that is not always so obvious. It is crucial that you understand your codes, that they make sense to you, because it is through the, this coding that you will eventually make sense of your data. And for this specific reason, it is very important that your codes are, uh, they basically make sense to you and that you understand them. And here, uh, the problem appears when we start wondering about how to name our codes and what really doesn't help is that, is that there are so many different guidelines and specific guidelines that kind of make uh, this process look like some form of a complex science. Some uh, approaches, some methodological approaches uh, openly encourage uh, this uh, form of, of uh, or uh, this grammatical form of coding over another one so they talk about let's say using gerund forms which is ing ing so uh, learning looking etc uh, some other approaches uh, they advertise some some other forms so short forms or long forms so there's so much guidelines and then as a student you're left confused and you're wondering constantly is is this how i name the codes like wh how, what's the rule what what is a good name of a code and this needless to say takes uh, takes your focus away from data analysis but in fact it is not that important what you name your codes uh, because it's not even the final uh, product, the final version of what you will show to, to everybody. The final version, the final output is your thematic framework. And yes, it is important how you name these themes and the thematic framework because they should make sense to the reader, they should be clear to the reader and this will be your way of communicating what you found to, to the world, to your readers. But uh, at the stage of coding, in order to communicate, to develop in the first place these themes, as I said, you need to understand your data. And for this, these are your tools. The codes are your tools. And it's uh, the only and the most important thing is that you understand your codes. And this leads me directly to my two pieces of advice. I suppose what I've said so far uh, 
could be argued to be one general advice. Don't worry about your codes. And that's, I guess, number one advice. But to be more specific, my two pieces of advice is to, uh, firstly, to use codes as your almost as your notes to yourself. And I'll explain in a second and I'll show you uh, some of my codes. So use the codes as notes to yourself. And the second advice is to use some, not always, but if necessary, if possible, use some keywords in your coding. And again, I'll show you uh, example codes and I'll explain what I mean by this. So now let's quickly go through some examples of my codes. And when necessary, I will refer to, to the piece of advice that I just gave you. So number one is my all time favorite. I shared it in, in another video. And this code reads uh, something potentially interesting that I don't understand. This is a real code. So of course it's not something you'd expect to see, right? So if you're reading books, it's not something that, that you would see as a code, something potentially interesting that I do not understand, but it's, it's a real code. So, uh, so what happened here, I, I was reading through uh, through a data set and I was a little bit tired so it was uh, it had been probably a long time or a couple of hours or whatever uh, of me coding so I was tired and and I almost missed that part of the text so I just kept reading quickly reading and scrolling almost didn't code that extract but then uh, the interviewers reaction to what the interviewee said indicated that it's important so the interviewers was something like oh wow this is so interesting uh, so this made me stop for a second and go back to that that extract that I didn't initially uh, make much of. So I went back to it, I, I read it again, and I, I couldn't really see why it's interesting. But the interviewer clearly says it's very interesting. So I decided I may be tired and I decided I may just have, may have had enough of coding for today. So in order to to remember to go back to this extract, because I, I believed it's probably something important, this is what I called my code. If I didn't use any code on that extract, how would I find it afterwards? So, so this is what I meant. It's, it was just a note to myself. Again, because if you're using software, and I strongly recommend that you use software, uh, what you'll have as a result is, is a code on your list. So once I get to the stage of when I sort all these codes and put them into groups and try to develop themes, and for this, uh, look at my other videos where I talk about how codes become themes. Uh, at that stage, I'm 100% sure that I will encounter this code and then it reads something potentially interesting. So I'll just open that code, read that extract again and make sure that maybe this time I coded this as, as something uh, more specific. So this just shows you what I, what I said, that you can use code and you should use codes sometimes as just your notes to yourself. This doesn't even describe what this person said, it's just a note to myself. So the second is a little bit similar. It says, he says he doesn't know, maybe use this as a challenge. So, so that's the code, that's the code I used. I, I selected a given extract of a text and I, and I called it, he says he doesn't know, maybe use it as a challenge. And, and specifically what this was, is it was about certain policies and certain, in a certain workplace. And when asked about these policies, this person said, I'm not aware of any policy. So uh, the researcher was hoping to find certain uh, specific details of these policies, but, but this person just wasn't aware of any policies in the first place. So, so this is why I called it this way. I said, he says he doesn't know, so maybe this is a challenge, maybe uh, later it's a note to myself, to my future self, if you like. So uh, to maybe use this as a challenge, maybe lack of awareness. Uh, so rather than using what this person actually said, this person never said uh, it's a challenge that we don't know about policies, but what this person said ind indicated to me that it may be a possible challenge to pay attention to, that some people may not be aware of policies in the first place. And, and importantly, if you want to know more about this kind of surface versus uh, implicit meaning coding. I also have a video about this. So whether you should code just something that the person actually says or whether you, you can also code something that, let's say, you think what this person said represents. So here, uh, the next two, I'll have to read them. They're quite long. So the first one says challenge size. In a big organization, it's easier to implement such changes because there are specialized and more experienced staff. So uh, challenge size in a big organization is easier to implement such changes. So obviously it was about changes, certain changes in certain organization. And again, I thought it's uh, 
the, the size of the organization was a challenge because and then i explained why so i explained in a big organization it's easier so the challenge was a small size of the organizations anyway uh, the point here is that again uh, as you can see it's it's it really does sound like a, like a note to myself because that's that's what it is and the same uh the same can be said about the next one which uh, reads as follows which is never ask to have a day off when uh, even despite illness feels that this would be awkward and thinks uh, this may have to do with the culture with her culture so again same same point it doesn't have to be this way it can be much shorter but sometimes it's just like uh, again i'm reflecting on something and just making sure that i don't forget so the following ones again i'll read them are are relatively straightforward so self-esteem definition barriers to communication gender and perception and, and stereotypes etc so so these are a little bit different they are they are obviously shorter however i also mentioned so the second uh, advice i gave you was about the use of keywords so this one gender and perceptions and stereotypes etc uh, firstly it's quite uh, of course it's quite broad and again it's, it's like a note to my uh, to myself but secondly the reason i i used so many different words is specifically because i used keywords so if you are using software again the moment you start to type an, uh, a new name of a code or existing name of a code when you're reading when you're scrolling through your data and the moment you start to type uh, what happens is that the software gives you suggestions for for what code to use if you have similar codes in your data so especially at the initial stages when you have lots of codes and i know that some of you who have done some coding probably know what i'm talking about because i've seen people uh, having a hundred or two or three or even 800 codes although the latter 800 is a little bit of a <laughs> high uh, high number so try try to uh, try to bring that number down before it becomes that big however w when you have a lot of codes uh, it does become confusing and you may not remember what codes you have so so the reason I'm using these keywords in that case is because I may not remember what I called it so I may remember there was something uh, but I'm not sure what it was what I what I referred to that that little Thing as. And to explain this uh, point further, look at this, uh, this code which says ways to improve suggestions, recommendations. That's exactly the point of using keywords. So, so if I have lots of codes, I may forget that at some point whether I, uh, I used, w which expression I used basically. Did I uh, say recommendations or suggestions? So if I just use suggestions and then I'm reading and reading throughout the subsequent um, transcripts, and I come across a recommendation, I may call this recommendations this time. So nothing bad will happen. I mean, it's not like it, this will ruin your data or anything, but what will happen is that I will have a couple of codes that are essentially about the same, but this one's called suggestions and another one's called recommendations. I will have to merge them eventually. So to avoid that, I just, I just use a whole bunch of keywords uh, to make sure that I don't forget. So the next time I start typing, whether it's suggestions or ways to improve or recommendations, I will see that I do have this code. So this is it. This is everything that I had to say about naming codes. Um, I hope that you learned something new. If you did, uh, please like the video to help others find it. Uh, remember that I offer private tutorials. So uh, if you need more help with your codes, we can have a look at your coding together. Uh, and feel free to ask questions in the comments if you have any questions after this video. So I guess the main message from this video would be don't worry about your codes. Just start coding and don't worry about how you name them.